Gentlemen, you know I talk about this channel as being the channel for the extra large man who wants to live his life large and in charge. But how exactly do you live large and in charge? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. How to live your life in a more fulfilling manner. Here, today, on Big Pretty Man. Hi, and welcome back to Big Pretty Man. The channel for the extra large man who wants to live his life large and in charge. I'm your host, Timothy Big Pretty Crow. I'm a wardrobe and lifestyle consultant for the extra large man. And actually, that's what we're going to talk about, is lifestyle. You know, I always say, you know, you, you know, this is the channel for living your life large and in charge. Well, how do you live that type of life? What exactly are you talking about, Big Pretty? Well, now first, I'm not going to go so much into vocation. I'm not a businessman. That's not my fort. By the way, it is pronounced fort, uh, forte. And thank you, George Carlin, for that, for putting that out. <laughs> uh, but it's that's you know, businessman is not my fort. There are other uh, fashion gurus and business gurus uh, on YouTube that'll give you much better perspective on that than me. Um, what, but what I'm talking about is more of how to have a more fulfilling life. Um, as far as the experiences of your life. And I was thinking about this because I've had so many friends tell me, wow, you know, Tim, Big Pretty, you've lived such an adventurous life. And I always find that a little strange. I don't think of it that way. And as I've said before in some of my other video, in one of my other videos, I just lived, I just did what I wanted to do and things happened as you, as you go along the way. I guess, you know, I'm 51, so I guess collectively that could look like I've had an adventurous life. But I don't think I'm alone on that. Um, I think everyone has had, you know, if you live long enough, if you, you know, unless you're just sitting home, going to work, you know, eating, eating at Wendy's every day, you know, and shopping at Walmart, you know, and that's your life. If, if you go anything beyond that, you're going to have some adventures. But then I, I do think that there are a lot of us out there that get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of being an adult. And we forget some of our dreams. We forget the things that we, we thought of doing as children. You know, and I, if there's any difference between me and others, it is that I never completely gave up on some of the dreams I had as a child. Even some of the most outlandish fantasy type of things. And you shouldn't either. You know, but we all get caught up in, in you know, in, in the day-to-day -day grind of, you know, we all went to school or we, we got into a job, we got the family, we, you know, uh, we have the responsibilities and all that's good and fine. I have, I have those too. I'm, I, I'm, a, fa I'm a father myself, uh, yeah, you know, and I've been through that, so, but I understand that. But that does, you know, in that process, so many of us forget, forget the, the wide-eyed, um, you know, fascination we had with the world and the adventures that were out there and the pl exotic places and possible experiences that we could have and we end up getting caught up in that routine. It's something you got to watch out for. So one thing that I swore to do when, even at a young age, was that there were certain things that I saw mostly on television or read in books and I'm like, someday I'm going to do that. I'm going to see that. And I've kept that promise, and I, at least partially, I still have plenty to go. Thank God. I hope I never run out. You know, I even started when I was young. Um, you know, I, I was fascinated, like a lot of little kids, with Batman starring Adam West. I'm like, I want to meet Batman. Well, five years old, I met Adam West dressed as Batman, which to me was kind of the equivalent of meeting God. <laughs> so... <clears throat> yeah, so right, right from the very beginning, I, I started off. But as I got to be adult and all of that, I still remembered some of the things that I wanted to do. Uh, for instance, I had a fascination with with um, um, real crime, you know, uh, criminology. Uh, you know, so, some of the famous cases, like the case of Jack the Ripper and of Lizzie Borden. Well, you know, I said that I one day I'm going to go to the Lizzie Borden house. I did. I said, someday I'm going to go to London and I'm going to go do the Jack the Ripper tour. I'm going to go to the places where Jack the Ripper committed these atrocious crimes. Well, I did. Actually, I stayed in an Airbnb right around the block from where Polly Nichols, the first, the first claim victim, confirmed victim, was murdered. I mean, I could have thrown a rock from the window and hit, hit the, uh, the crime scene. 
So I did that. When I also when I was younger, I the, my one of my favorite movies when I was real little was Jaws. You know, it came out when I was about five, and actually it was the first movie I ever saw in a theater. My father took me, <laughs> and I still remember that. And I said one day I used to talk about I want to go swim with sharks. I want to go. I'd never seen the ocean. I'm from Kentucky. You know, we, my family didn't travel. When they traveled, they never went toward the ocean for whatever reason. So I was sore. One day, you know, not only am I going to see the ocean, but I'm going to I'm going to learn how to scuba. I'm going to learn how to snorkel, and I'm going to swim with the fish. And I'm going to swim with the fo- with the with the sharks. And I did. So when I was 14, I saw the Karate Kid, and I'm like, I really I want to learn karate. I want my black belt. So by the time I was 19, I did I did I. And I had my black belt in Shaolin Do Karate, and actually I taught, fought tournaments very much like the ones that you see in, um, in the Karate Kid, and I won quite a few. Of course, now if I kicked, you know, much past my waist, I'd probably throw a muscle, <laughs> but that was a long time ago. <laughs> you know, another thing in my teenage years is I had a real love for the macabre horror of H.P. Lovecraft. I read everything that he had written, as well as a lot of the other pulp writers. And I swore that someday I was going to go to Providence, Rhode Island, and I was going to see his grave. And I did, you know. In fact, I went there in the middle of a of a heavy thunderstorm, walking through that graveyard, and I thought, you know what, this is appropriate. <laughs> Another thing that I want to do from childhood, when I was real little, I was obsessed with Robin Hood. I loved Robin Hood, and I said, you know, one of these days, I'm going to go to Sherwood Forest, and I did. In fact, when I was uh, there, the, I went out to see Ancient Oak. Um, which is, you know, rumored to be Robin Hood and his merry men camped. Couldn't have that tree would have been very small back at that time. But still, I got to see it. And what was funny, they were actually doing the Robin Hood Festival, and they told me to watch out for flying arrows. Let me tell you, I wish I'd have got grazed or sli- even slightly wounded by an arrow. If I'd gotten wounded by an arrow in Sherwood Forest, I'd have bragged about it for the rest of my life. <laughs> but it was really great to go. Uh, so, you know, um, another thing I wanted to do was stand-up comedy. You know, I always loved stand-up comedy. I said, some of these days I'm going to get up on that stage. So I did. I did stand-up comedy for a, for um, over uh, for over a year, about a year and a half. Did pretty well, you know. Uh, I met a lot of big uh, comedians. I met, like, Dave Chappelle and Cedric the Entertainer and John Panette, you know, and... and you know, and and preacher Moss, who was actually a minister to me, you know, and you know, and I and I had a great time at it. You know, I decided not to make try for a career, but uh, you know, but uh, but I had a great time. Um, so you know, another thing that I said was that you know I'm a big Star Wars fan, and I always said I was going to get a tattoo of Darth Vader across my back, my whole back with a with the Death Star. So I did, <laughs> and this thing took like eight weeks to do and it was quite an ordeal so all these adventures that I said I would do um, I did now one adventure I don't never say that one of the more classic ones is to clown, climb Mount Everest I have no desire to climb up that mountain because the chances of me surviving it are pretty slim and I don't want to be a frozen carcass stuck up there that people use you know as, as a landmark there's a guy that they call green boots you know, they know the guy's name, but he died up there and he's frozen. They can't get you down, so you're just frozen up there forever until they eventually clear the mountain off once every 70 years. And now they use green boots as a direction, you know, you know, turn. I don't need them going turn left at the frozen carcass of Big Pretty. No, thank you. <laughs> That's just one of, one of a couple. A few. I said, also, there was a television show, and a lot of people my age will remember this show. It was called In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy. And, uh, you know, he, he showed all of these uh, fantastical mysteries, you know, everything from Bigfoot to the Loch Ness Monster to UFOs to witchcraft and voodoo and true crime. The Amityville Horror House was in there, you know. And I always swore, I'm going to go see these places. To, you know, go to some of these. I'm going to go hunt for Bigfoot. What I wanted to really do that when I was a kid. I want to go see the Loch Ness Monster, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I want to see the Amityville House. Well... <laughs> I've seen the Amityville house. I've, I've you know, um, I drove out there and, and saw the Amityville house. You know, I, uh, you know, I swore that I, you know, I had a fascination with with medieval things. I had a fascination with medieval battles and and pirates and the outfits and, and participating in, in you know in that type of life. And I swore, you know, and I always wanted swords and shields and 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 and, and um, 
in armor and experience that well when I got grown, I joined the Society for Creative Anachronism, which you know replicates a lot of that and they have real battles with rattan swords but it's very high intense they wear real armor real you know and, the, and and they when they hit it's not a light tap they hit like they're swinging an, an axe handle so this is a very rough sport and they dress in the medieval outfits and yes i've you know and i have as you you know i have the outfits i have the armor i've participated in that so i got to live that experience you know, and also, yes, I've dressed as a pirate and I've went to Ren, I go to Ren Fairs. So I've got to experience that kind of life and I have a lot of swords. <laughs> you know, so I got to live that out. Now, some people may see that as childish and I hope they do. It should be childish. When you were a child, your imagination was wild. You, 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 what you wanted, what you wanted to do, you saw the world as an open oyster. You didn't care what other people thought. Get that back. You know, remember the things you wanted to do as a child. And go do them. You know, think of the one thing you thought you wanted to do when you was when you was a little kid. The 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 one place that you wanted to see. Go see it. You know, life is very very short, folks. You know, and it's too. Sh and this is a big beautiful world full of lots of different cultures and experiences and beautiful sights and beautiful scenery. You know, it's far too small to to you know. Life is far far too short for such a big world. Get the most of it as you can. You know, I had a Muslim friend, a Muslim sheikh friend. Once again, I, you know, studied with a lot of religious uh, uh, teachers, and he said, told me something I never forgot when I was in my early twenties. He said, "You know, life is very short," and people say that, but they don't think they realize just how short their experience of life is. He said, "Think about it. Let's say you live to be eighty years old." If you're lucky, if you don't die of a disease or an accident or somebody shoots you or something <laughs> tragic like that. Let's say you do live to be 80 years old. Well, about one third of your life you spend asleep. So that right there knocks it down to about 60 years of life. Now, out of that 60 years, 20 of it, you're under someone, pretty much under someone else's control and you're doing your education. You're under the control of your parents. You know, so you, you, you don't, you're not a free person. You're still under someone else's control, and you're still too young, most of that, at least 18 years of that, to, you know, to really do the things you want to do. So now it knocks it down to actual livable life. You know, you've just lost another 20, so now you're down to 40. Um, well, out of the, 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 uh, also you got to, but you also consider in your elder years, you're going to get too old and too ill you know, or at least to the, uh, um, lose a lot of the capacities to do a lot of the things you want to do. Not all seniors are doing much more, and eighty is now like seven, you know, sixty-five or seventy. But still, you know, you're, you're going to have trouble climbing Everest or, or things like that when, or, or 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 power skiing or you know, water skiing or or jumping out of airplanes. I mean, it's possible, but still, you know, you're you're, you're in the your latter years. Not only are you physically becoming unable to do a lot of the things you want to do, but in the latter years, a lot of times you are, un once again, like a child, under the control of other people. You know, you're in, had to be taken care of by your children. You have to go to, to a uh, to, to a retirement home, so, you, you know, um, you know, for your waiting years. So now you're down to about 20 years of actually conscious adult free life. 20 years, collectively. Now, think about how old you are now and what your number get shrunk down to. Don't let it shrink anymore. Don't waste any more time. Get out and do those things. Because when you're older, when you are sitting in that retirement home or sitting in your kid's, you know, in your kid's uh, um, spare room, you know, uh, with your grandchildren, which is another fulfilling thing, you know, when you sit, don't sit and think, I, w I, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. Get out and do those childhood dreams find those dreams go experience them you will not regret it of course i still have plenty more you know that i i want to do i wanted to ride a camel across the desert i did that you know i you know i i, I wanted to um you know i wanted to visit uh, buddhist temples i've done that you know um i you know I, i've wanted to you know i wanted to um, see i wanted to go to england 
You know, I wanted to see the, the Tower of London. I did that. I wanted to see where Henry VIII, once you've seen one of my videos, the first big man and one I look like, I wanted to sit where he had sat. I wanted to walk through, through Hampton Court. I did that. I wanted to see where Shakespeare was buried. I did that. You know, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I want, you know, I wanted to to see where my ancestors came from, and I went and found the grave of my eighth great grandfather, you know, in, in um, uh, you know, in, in northern England, now Cal Newcastle upon Tyne, uh, and I did that. So you know, um, so and I'm all, my like I said, are my adventures over with? Of course not. The the oh, once again going back to in search of I still got a couple that I'm I want to do number one, I want to go out to the famous Patterson Gimlin film site in Bluff Creek, California. I want to so get a guy get a horse to take me out there. Now, I don't know if that film of, of that of the Bigfoot doing the walk <laughs> is real or not. I'm not going to get into that. But of course, as a child, I thought that it was. Since then, in education, all that I'm have major questions. I think it's most likely a hoax, but I don't care. It's an iconic cultural thing. I want to see where it was done, whether it was a real, you know, whether um, Patty was a real Sasquatch or not, or a guy in a suit. I want to see where it's done. Um, also, on that same note, and this one I'm planning for my next adventure, I am going to Loch Ness, which is a big one for me. As a little kid, I wanted to go to that that lake so bad. I wanted to go to that Scottish lake so horribly bad, and you know, and I'm going to go now. I, once again, now on this one, I am almost completely positive there is nothing in that lake except for maybe some great big sturgeon, an occasional seal that gets spotted, and some really weird hydrodynamics. Um, with waves, uh, rolling waves on, on that lake that people mistake for a monster. But I don't give a damn. You know, I want to go out there. I want, to, I want a picture of me beside of Urquhart Castle, you know, which I've, I've looked at since I was five years old. You know, I, you know I, and you know, when I'm out there, even though I don't believe it, I think, oh, we'd all be that way. You don't believe it. There's nothing that like, but you got to look. <laughs> you got to walk. Mm. <laughs> I want to do that. You know, and I will, and I definitely will. Um, you know, and and that's you know, another big adventure that I want that I'm sorry to do. And also challenge yourself in this. You know, challenge your, yourself. I want to do a pilgrimage walk. There's a famous pilgrimage walk where you can walk from Canterbury, uh, the the Canterbury Cathedral in Canterbury, England, all the way to Rome, and this great pilgrimage to the Vatican, to Vatican City. Now, I weigh 330 pounds, and even though I love walking, that's going to be quite a challenge. But considering everything else I've done, do you think I won't do it? <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I'm sure you're guessing right. Um, but that's what I say. When I say live your life large and in charge, live, in, live large in the world. Whether you're a wealthy man, uh, you know, a, a middle-income man, or even a poor person, do what you can. Put, 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 you know, save up your money, you know, to make these adventures. Go on little adventures. Make the most out of your life, whatever that life would be. Because you only get the, you know, as far as we know, you only get the one. You know, and when it's over, it's over. And don't be end up sitting in, in that chair when you're, you're old and you can't, you can barely get up and think, I should have did this, I should have done that. Go do it. Live your life large and in charge. And once again, obviously, it's like the walk and all of it. The walk I'm talking about doing, the pilgrimage. I'm not allowing my, my weight to be a barrier to stop me. And don't let it stop you. And don't let the expectations of adulthood stop you from living your childhood dreams. Because in the long run, you know, they came at the beginning. And at the end, they're going to be the real things that matter. That brings you full circle. All right. So, and also, as part of adventure, keep watching me. <laughs> I will update you all these things as I do them. So, if you haven't already joined, please hit this little King Henry head with my pretty face. And, in, in, you know, and, and also you can follow me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And leave, you got any comments or things? I'd love to hear the things you've done, the experiences you've done, or what you want to do. Or, you know, please send me a, me send me a, me a message down below. Leave me a comment. Or, leave, or, or send me something on my email or all these other venues I just mentioned. I'd love to hear them. might give me some inspiration for some of the things I want to do. So you get out there. You live your life large and in charge. And while you're doing it, 
you stay pretty.